So hello everyone, I'm with our Educo trainer, Margie Holzer, and we are going to be talking today a little bit about tech transfer in biopharmaceuticals. So welcome Margit. My first question to you then is just give me a summary of what tech trans transfer is. Um, yeah, what is it in biopharma? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hello everybody. Hello Alex. Yes, tech transfers, uh, they, from the formal point of view, they start when you transfer the process, your developed process from the R&D to the GMP facilities. It could be upstream, downstream, formulation, uh, fill and finish. So we have uh, this part of the process for sure. We have all the analytical uh, method transferred, but this is uh, uh, a speci specific area that I will not address uh, at this point. When it comes to technology transfer, uh, dependent on uh, the expression system, dependent on your uh, process formats uh, in the upstream already. So we have a lot of uh, considerations uh, concerning the equipment, concerning also the control strategy that you put in place in the R&D level, for instance, and then checking these in uh, the targeted uh, receiving uh, installation uh, equipment, dimensioning, environment and controls, uh, and also how you can monitor the process. So all this online headline monitoring that comes from the process itself. But we have a lot of controls also concerning cell counts, uh, metabolites uh, that needs to be assured during uh, this transfer. And therefore we need to document all these, uh, what we expect uh, from the transferred process, how we can judge the quality, what are the minimum requirements, what are the specifications uh, at the harvest, for instance, and then for sure we also need to look how these uh, quality attributes are then translated in the downstream processing. So. The first step for me is a risk assessment gap analysis to really make this a systematic approach, uh, see how these facilities fit, how the equipment fits, how also the media preparation, how the uh, controls uh, are aligned, and uh, then describe uh, the expectation, describe also how many batches we need to uh, demonstrate this uh, alignment and then also have a short uh, comparability exercise already at this stage of uh, transfer from R&D to TMP clinical production, uh, material production, because there is uh, material that went into talk studies, PK, PD studies, and we want to make sure that the quality uh, attributes and can be also met during uh, the clinical production. When it comes then later stage tech transfers, um, it becomes much more challenging because we have uh, many more quality attributes that are defined and where we have specifications. Uh, we need to think also about stability of the product that derives from these uh, uh, tech transfer batches. Tech transfer could be uh, to another site, could be also scale-ups. So uh, all the requirements uh, from the ICH uh, Q5E uh, concerning comparability are, are maybe not completely applicable and it's a face-to-face a -face approach uh, uh, that we need to apply during clinical development, but there are minimal requirements uh, concerning all the safety uh, regulations. So for instance, if there are steps that need to be changed, transferred, scaled up, uh, that uh, are considered as viral clearance or viral inactivation steps, there uh, it's a major concern in terms of uh, safety and therefore you need to have uh, uh, it, as a mitigation plan, change control procedure, potentially additional viral current studies, inactivation studies that need to be planned for and that need to be available before you can uh, use the material uh, for your clinical trials. 
So, uh, and as it comes then to later uh, stages after uh, approval, again, if there is a major change like uh, uh, a scale up, a transfer to another facilities, you have also all the interaction with the regulatory bodies and uh, dependent on the impact of the change, there might be uh, additional validation activity, uh, activities, process validation activities that are linked to these uh, changes. So I hope this is just really the very, very high level summary uh, ideas that uh, come up uh, when it comes to tech transfer. Uh, yes, we need a lot also the analytical folks uh, to evaluate the material that comes out for, from these uh, transfer batches. We need to understand how many batches uh, we are considering for this transfer exercise, to which batches and qualities that we compare this uh, uh, material uh, and also all the stability profiles, how long do we need and which stability studies do we need to demonstrate comparability. And this is also a very hot button, button in the uh, industry because uh, uh, tech transfers uh, are cumbersome and uh, uh, this is normal, our tech transfer during development. So we have changes and, and transfer scale ups. So therefore, this exercise is one that's looked at and uh, also in the cell and gene therapy world, uh, sometimes uh, this was a little bit negligent and therefore a lot of questions from regulators come specifically on this subject. Brilliant, thank you. That's a lot of information. Maggie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, my my I just want to very quickly then is what what are the common pitfalls or common challenges or or you know issues that you see from from your clients and in the industry? Mm -hmm. So that uh, this first stage of gap analysis is not done sufficiently detailed, yeah, because we can have. Uh, uh, improved processes but with automation, for instance, with containment, with single use, but still we need to understand how the process is really applied then uh, in the receiving uh, plant. And therefore, uh, the, the experts, they need to do this uh, assessment uh, very detailed with uh, both parties also. So there is a donor and there is a receiver and, uh, and they, they need to align and understand uh, the, the process uh, realization. And together also with all the control strategies that uh, can be put in place. And it's a common commitment. So it's not just that I give you, okay, you sign and then it's your baby. You need to make sure that uh, these teams, these transfer teams, they work up until the end. And the end is when we have potentially two uh, transfer patches that uh, met all the predefined uh, 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 criteria. So it's uh, this is very important and then that there is also a protocol, there's a formalism that we agree on the acceptance criteria and defining the acceptance criteria in terms of process performance, but also in terms of quality attributes, it takes some time and agreeing on it and finding also the reference point in terms of uh, it's not only the specifications that we are looking at, it's also other, uh, uh, it's the exact values for some quality attributes that we are checking and we have uh, additional characterization methods that need to be applied and where we need to demonstrate comparability of uh, the product before and after change. And uh, this can be sometimes uh, challenging to, to really demonstrate uh, this comparability and also all what it needs, the status of the analytical method uh, development. And the other point is, uh, yeah, sometimes we don't have all the methods ready, uh, like bioassays, that they are not fully developed and we could have a surprise then later on that with these new methods that's available 
Finally, this does not show comparability. So this is also when you don't have all the the measurements, all uh, the criteria that you look at, it's it's another challenge. And unfortunately, a head project where exactly these happened and we had to go back in terms of uh, clinical development. Um, so this is uh, so don't forget all the uh, picture in terms of and, and the situation and analytical methods that help us to have the right classes to charge our uh, performance and the product that comes out of the new process. Brilliant, thank you, Margie. Um, that was a very good insight and overview. It sounds like it's extremely difficult to do technology transfer. <laughs> yeah, it's challenging, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's always very exciting for me to to go through the processes and understand where are the differences and how we can mitigate these differences and take uh, risks that are adapted to the situation. I would say. Brilliant. No, I I I think that'll give a, that will give some insight to to the to the process and and some little little tips there for how to how to overcome challenges. So. No, brilliant. Thank you, Margie, for your time. And thank you, everyone, for listening to this. And um, yeah, see you soon.